Alrighty, you guys excited because you've been asking for this one for a few years now. <laughs> it's finally here. I am showing you how to make this wizard robe inspired by Harry Potter. It's inspired by a Hogwarts school robe. And uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome. I'm pretty happy how this one turned out. For this project, you will need the following. You will need Fleecefun's free PDF pattern available on fleecefun.com, black cotton, see the webpage for the exact amount, cotton in your house color, you'll need maroon for Gryffindor, green for Slytherin, yellow for Hufflepuff, and blue for Ravenclaw, a house patch, I have a link to where you can find that below, three yards of hem tape, and that's optional depending on how you want to hem up the robe, thread in black and the house color, sewing essentials, pins, needles, that sort of thing, iron, and a sew-on toggle clasp. Again, that's optional, but nice to have. All right, now that you have all those items, it's time to cut out all the pattern pieces. And I need to give you a little warning about this pattern. Now, because there are many, many pieces to this thing, and also because I didn't want you to have to like spend half the day assembling the pattern, or maybe more than half a day, <laughs> Um, I've made it so the front and back pattern piece are doubled into one. So you need to pay attention as to how you need to cut down the piece or cut it out properly. Okay. Um, this way it just, it saves paper and it saves you time. And that's one of the downfalls of PDF patterns is the assembly of it. So I'm trying to help you out here, but you need to pay attention to how I cut it out and how this pattern um, cuts down. So you're successful. Assemble the pattern. You can find detailed instructions on how to do that on fleecefun.com. On folded fabric, place the back on the fold and cut out one. When you unfold it, the back should be one large piece. Now it's time to cut out the hood. Here you can see how it should be placed on the fabric in relation to the row back so you get the most out of your fabric and on folded fabric, cut out two. Essentially, you will cut out the back and then cut down the pattern so you can cut out the front. You'll notice on the Harry Potter wizard row pattern piece, there is a red line. Cut down the pattern to the red line to make it the shape of the front. Place the pattern on folded fabric and cut two. Notice that this pattern piece does not sit on the fold. Be sure to mark the notches on the neckline. You will have two separate pattern pieces for the front when you're finished. For the sleeves of the Harry Potter row pattern with the remaining fabric, adjust the fold so it's not in the center of the fabric or else you won't have enough fabric, so make sure you adjust the fabric. Make it wide enough to cut out the sleeve, cut one, and then adjust the fold again to cut out the other sleeve. For the house color lining, cut out the following. Cut two of the sleeve lining on the fold. Cut two of the wizard cloak lining. And cut two of the wizard hood lining. Note, to get the most out of your fabric, you'll flip the pattern piece so the printed side is face down on the fabric. Make sure that you include the notches for reference later. All right, now that you have all those items cut out, it's time to start sewing. All seam allowances are half an inch unless otherwise stated. Let's begin with the exterior of the robe. Take the back of the robe and the two front pieces. Pin right sides together. Sew the shoulder seams. Okay, let's work on the sleeves. Line up the center of the sleeve with the shoulder seam. Next, take the sleeves and pin to each side, right sides together. Sew the sleeves to the robe. Okay, let's sew up the sides of the robe. Now fold the robe so the shoulder seams are at the top. With the right sides together, pin the side seams of the robe all the way from the bottom to the ends of the sleeves. Sew the sides and then set the robe aside. All right, let's start putting the hood together. With the right sides together, sew the top of the hood exterior using a half inch seam allowance. Then, following the red line on the pattern piece as a guide, sew to the notch at the base of the neck using a half inch seam allowance. Repeat this process with the hood lining in the house color. Trim notches in the curve so it will lay nicely. 
turn the hood so the fronts, the long straight edge, are facing each other and pin right sides together. Sew together. Then turn right side out. Stuff the lining into the hooded robe exterior. Line up the notches on the neckline and pin the hood to the robe, right sides of the exterior touching. Sew the hood to the robe. Set the robe aside. All right, looking good. Now it's time to add that lining part. To create that flash of house color inside the robe, we need to prep and insert the lining. You will need to finish the raw edge of the lining. This is the side of the lining that comes to a point at the top. You can either turn it under a quarter of an inch, press it, then zigzag stitch along the edge in the thread that is the same to finish the edge, or you can use a turning foot to turn that raw edge under and finish it. This is how I chose to do it. Make sure that they are mirror images so you don't turn under the hem on the same side. Once the edge is finished, you can attach it to the Hogwarts robe. Line up the top of the lining with the hood neckline with right sides together. Pin the lining and sew onto the wizard's robe. Trim the seam at the point. Turn the lining to the inside. Repeat this on the other side. Let's work on the sleeves. Now it's time to add that flash of color to the sleeves. On the straight side, finish the edge like you did the lining, either with a turned edge like I did, or fold it under to the wrong side and zigzag stitch it down. Take the sleeve lining and on the small side, pin right sides together and sew to make it a loop. Add it to the sleeves. With the rope sleeve turned right side out, pin the wizard cloak lining sleeve to the sleeve so right sides are touching. The sleeve lining seam should be facing out. Note, the seams on the sleeve and the lining do not match up. The curves do. This is to hide the seams for a more pleasing appearance. Pin each side of the sleeves, right sides together, sew on using a quarter inch seam allowance. Flip the lining out and then tuck it into the sleeve. Now this part is optional but recommended. Top stitch along the outer edge of the sleeve to keep the lining inside and make it look neat. Hand tack the edge of the rope sleeve lining to the inside of the sleeve with glue or a few stitches just to keep it in place. All right, just a few more finishing touches and we're there. Again, there are a couple of different methods that you can use to finish the robe at this point. You can turn the hem under an inch and sew along the edge with a zigzag stitch or you can use hem tape to iron up the hem. It's your costume, you can finish it as nicely or as quickly as you would like. Add the house patch to the left side of the robe, and if desired, add a toggle clasp where the front V comes to a point on the wizard robe. Top stitch around the front and hood so the rope will lay nicely. And you're finished with the Harry Potter robe DIY. And you're finished, you have this great robe. It looks perfect, it's, you know, it just looks good. And those patches that I have on the robe, totally available on Amazon, really easy to buy. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more awesome videos just like this one. If you like this project, I have several others on my website, fleecewind.com, that I know you'll enjoy. I have 
many different costume tutorials on there that are, you know, on the easier side, have a free pattern and a video tutorial, just like this one. Please give me a thumbs up for my hard work here. I appreciate that. And I have a recommended video for you to check out. Oh, and a link to that pattern also. Remember, velvet is pretentious. Fleece is fun. So what house do you think you would be sorted into? You know, I, I want to be Gryffindor, but I have a feeling I'd be put in Hufflepuff. It's just kind of what my gut says deep down inside. What about you?